Good morning. And my name is John Bost, and I'm here to welcome you to Episcopal Church of the Nativity. Uh, I'm serving as your vestry person of the day, whatever that is, and we're happy to welcome our online audience today on the YouTube channel Nativity Scottsdale. If you're watching us from home and would like to download a bulletin, uh, please go to the website nativityscottsdale.org and click join us for worship and then scroll down for a regular size bulletin or a uh, large script bulletin. If you're here today for the first time, uh, we invite you to fill out one of the visitor cards that are in one of the pouches in front of you there and place it in the offering plate. And we have a small gift for you afterwards as you leave. Please join us for coffee and refreshments after the service and we're glad you're here today. Welcome everyone.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first lesson is a reading from Job. Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Hear, and I will speak. I will question you, and you declare to me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends, and the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before, and they ate bread with him in his house. They showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And each of them gave him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first Jemima, the second Keziah, and the third Karen Hapuk. In all the land there were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived for 140 years and saw his children, his children's children, four generations. And Job died old and full of days. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 
Today's psalm reading is a portion of Psalm 34. Let us re read it responsibly by whole verse. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall even be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I looked upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Many are the troubles of the righteous but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. He will keep saving all his bones, and all them shall be broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished for trusting him. The second lesson is a reading from Hebrews. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office, but Jesus holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. So, throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. When Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The, the blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. 
The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O God, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. A few weeks ago, I preached about the deaf man who wanted to hear, and Jesus healed him. Today, we have a blind man, Bartimaeus, who wants to see, and Jesus healed him. In the Friday 2 p.m. MailChimp that comes out, I wrote an introduction about what the sermon would be about today, and I wrote, Our Gospel and Scripture readings this Sunday point to God's mercy and love. We are reminded we need that mercy to live, that mercy of God, and to share it with others. As Christians, we are called to be God's agents in the world, sharing love and mercy. When I gave that sermon about the man who was deaf, I talked about a couple of gentlemen who lived downtown near our building right across from uh, Chase Field. Uh, one gentleman named Rex and the other one named Richard. And I wanted to give you an update. So I gave Richard some, and Rex also a pillow, uh, and Richard a pillow and a blanket and some food and some tuna fish cans and some water because He's on the streets. He actually lives right behind the building, right in a little kind of little U-shaped concrete enclave right by the railroad tracks. If you remember, I had said that his daughter is a police officer somewhere here in the valley in one of the neighboring uh, towns. And he was up in the Apache Mountains and came down to see his daughter and his new granddaughter. But because of some of his issues of addiction and all that, he's not able to stay in the apartment with his daughter. I found out recently that he has a sister kind of south and a little bit west of downtown, and he goes over there to take a shower and use the restroom and uses one of her bikes. A few weeks ago, I saw him again because I hadn't seen him because we had the monsoons and it kind of washed out his living area. And then I wondered where he was, and he was at his sister's house, and then I saw him again. I said, Richard, oh, Scott, how are you doing? And he didn't have anything, and, I, and I, he was sleeping right there with shoes as his pillow, tennis shoes as his pillow. And I said, I'm going to go upstairs and get you a pillow, and I'm going to get you a blanket, and I'm going to get you some water. So I went upstairs and, and brought it down. He was very grateful. About... Two days later, I saw him again, and he didn't have the pillow or the blanket, and I thought, like, sometimes that happens with people on the street, that someone stole it. And so, gave him some more water and prayed with him and wished him well, and we we'll see him again, and he was very nice, and he cleans up some of the debris and trash that we find around our building after a baseball game. So he's kind of working in his environment, his neighborhood, to clean it up. And we're very grateful. And so, a few days later, 
Um, I was uh, up by McDowell and 7th Street. I was at a, uh, near the Safeway there, and I was going into an office to get uh, something notarized. And I was in the lobby waiting for the person to get back from their lunch break. And I was facing this way toward the elevators, and it was about maybe 2.30 in the afternoon. And I hear the door open behind me from the outside, and uh, someone come in, and I heard his voice. And this is a couple miles from where we live. He lives here, I live here. And I said, Richard. And he said, oh, okay. He came over, and I said, what are you doing over here? It's kind of far from, from the building. He said, well, I, I just got off the bus. I needed to cool down. So I thought I'd come in this building. I said, okay, it was great to see you, and we talked a little bit, and I said, well, where are you headed? He said, I'm headed to um, see my probation officer because I have to give a urinalysis so that I can continue to live out here. And he said, uh, he said I'm going to th uh, 3737 South 7th Street. And I said, well, are you, are you on this side of the road? He said, yeah. I said, you're going north. You need to go south. Oh, I, and he got all confused. And he said, I've got to be there by 5 to my probation officer, or he's going to do a bench warrant, have a judge do a bench warrant, and arrest me and go back into jail. So I said, well, let's call your probation officer. So we called him. I got on the phone, and I said, I told him who I was, and I live downtown and I've kind of become his pastor in a way and working with him and he's been working to clean up the neighborhood. He's been doing a good job and trying to give some type of credibility to the fact that, you know, somebody that has a title or whatever can, can vouch for him. And he said, well, he still has to come in today. He needs to be here by 4.30 or he'll be arrested. And this man is in his late 60s, early 70s. It's like any grandpa. So I said, um, Richard, I gotta go up and do this paperwork, but stay here and I'll drive you down to the probation office. Will you do that for me? I said, oh, absolutely. So I did my work, came and got him, drove down, it was about, we got there about 10 to four, so we had plenty of time. He went in and did his paperwork, did what he needed to do based upon the law, and wasn't put in jail. Now, I think that is a God moment. What are the odds of me being in that office lobby at the same time that he comes in, headed the wrong way, could have been arrested, probably didn't know, and would have been up at 3737 North 7th Street? That's what we call a God wink, when God winks at you. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So I drove him down and, and dropped him off and you know, said, I'll see you around the building. And he went in and did his thing, and I went home. It only took me five minutes out of my way, not a big deal. You know, Jesus reminds his disciples to be in the world, not of the world. We have a chance to do the same as people of faith. The opportunities are around us all the time. There are plenty of God winks out there if we just can take off the scales from our eyes like Paul, not be blind to them. A lot of people who are without homes on the street, people don't look them in the eye. They look through them. And I understand some people are nervous, they're gonna ask me for money, I don't know what to say. And, but there are opportunities all around us that the Holy Spirit gives us to exercise our faith as people of God. A week later, I saw him outside, and we were talking to some folks uh, who were walking dogs, and he said, I would walk 10 miles for this man, Mr. Scott, for what he did for me. And he came over, and he gave me this bowl. And I, he, he said, I got this for you at a Goodwill store. I paid $5 for it, and $5 for someone on the streets is a lot of money. I thought you'd like it. Look at the bottom. So I looked at the bottom made by Gregorian monks in the U.S. 
And I have a feeling this might have been a baptismal bowl. That's what I'm going to go with. And in the bowl, he had a, a packet of dry dog food. This is for you. This is for your dogs. I know you love your dogs. And I didn't tell them that they don't eat dry food. They can only have wet food. But I, thank you so much. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for remembering my dogs. This is a blessing. Someone giving me a baptismal bowl. As Christians, we're baptized to be ministers of the gospel, not fancy clergy or any of this stuff with these, these uh, stoles. We're all called to do that, are we not? To not be deaf or blind to the needs of the world. To show that same love and mercy to other people that God has shown to us. I'll never forget that. That was one of the most amazing blessings of my life to be able to help this man that God put right there at the same time at 2.30 in the afternoon on a Monday afternoon. So what opportunities do you have in your neighborhood at the grocery store to show that love and mercy? How is that manifested in your daily life? There are plenty of ways. If you go to a grocery store and you see the same checkout folks, why not consider giving them a Christmas bonus to make their life easier on their feet all those hours? What I want to do one day when I retire is to go to Walmart and stand near the, the customer service, and when people come in to pay their layaway for their child's Christmas gift, I want it to be anonymous that someone paid off your thing for your child. Some people call that karma in the Eastern religions. What I call it is looking out and seeing a different perspective of what the world presents to us. To not be deaf, to not be blind, and not just receive it, but to go and seek it. To go and find those opportunities, those God winks that God brings through the Holy Spirit. Because they're there every single day. And I would pray that this week, maybe, we could do one thing for one person when God is winking at you and at me and at each of us. Amen. Standing, we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all, all things, things were made, made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and marched to Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <coughs> The prayers of the people, Form 4, are found on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, your help us honor the knowledge of our indigenous neighbors to listen through them to your call to renew the life of the earth and to live together as your people. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our companion diocese of Western Mexico. In the Anglican Communion cycle of prayer, we pray for the Scottish Episcopal Church. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Anthony on the desert in Scottsdale. Lord, in your mercy. God of all nations and peoples, be with the people of Israel and those in the Palestinian territories as they suffer from war. We pray also for those impacted by war in Ukraine and Russia. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom, no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace, as children of one God, to whom be dominion and glory, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. We're glad you're here today. If you are here for the first time, we'd like to ask you to fill out a little newcomer card. We have a gift for you right after church and have a chance to greet you over some coffee hour and some uh, refreshments. Uh, I hear there's a birthday cake out there. So, Janice, I think you're responsible. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. And uh, it's... Um, you <laughs> Stay up all night? Yes, yeah, yeah. So uh, going from 57 to 58. Um, so we have a couple of announcements in the order of worship on the back page. If you look at the first one, it, October is Stewardship Month, and we have out by the little circular U table by the bell, we have a box which has A through Z, and in the box is your 2025 financial pledge intention card. And inside the little thing, and this says it's a stamp if you want to get it today, you have the card that the treasurer will receive confidentially with an envelope. And you can either place it in the um, offering plate there or mail it or bring it next week. There's a letter which indicates what some of the projected expenses are going into next year, uh, which are going to be an increase between 3 to 8%. So we ask you to prayerfully consider perhaps raising your pledge from last year, 8 or 10%. Um, the pledges can constitute 85% of our church budget, with the remaining 15% coming from investments, plate income from non-pledgers, building use income from music groups and recitals, a portion of the Arizona North Star Arts income, AA groups, and income from Maricopa County that were a polling place. Uh, so they've had, we've had three elections, and when the poll uh, uh, person in charge said, would you, you know, would you consider, I said, sure, come look at the campus, tell me if this works. And she said, this is great. She said, and we did this in Texas at my church in the Fort Worth, Dallas area. And she said, all right, now where do we send the check? I said, the what? You get a check. You get $2,000 for each election. So we got $6,000 in income this year, because in Texas we did not get paid for that. We just did it as a community service to our neighbors. So we were, I was like, blown over. But we, so they've been great to work with. The final thing in that little packet is this yellow sheet. We talk about time, talent, and treasure. That's the treasure. This is time and talent. So this is, gives you an opportunity to see if you maybe want to start a new ministry or be part of some greeting or newcomer ministry, 
Maybe some worship ministry if you like to wear white robes and serve stuff up here. Maybe the choir. Christian education for adults or kids. Plenty of outreach opportunities. And fellowship and pastoral care or administration. So prayerfully take this home, consider it, and bring it back when you, uh, when you feel uh, ready to do that. And then next week we have our annual chili cook-off. So you can bring the heat. I'm going to do a pot of vegetarian chili with a secret ingredient. So how many of you have done this before? Where's Jeff Jameson? He must have got stepped outside. Oh, there he is. Okay, so we've got some folks we need to fill the ranks. Richard, I think you said you might bring some chili next time. So bring it in a crock pot. You can bring it in. We'll, we'll plug it in and keep it warm, and then we'll have the... Um, Jeff, what's it called? The Silver, Silver Ladle? Silver Ladle Award. And Jeff is the defending champion. Jeff, speaking of Jeff, would you like to say a few words? Thanks, Rod. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, this is a small announcement. Something big is going on on November 5th. Uh, what would that be? <laughs> okay, uh, but there's also something big going on on Saturday the 2nd, next Saturday, and uh, that's our um, monthly gathering at St. Mary's Food Bank, and um, I have to say that hunger is not a partisan issue. It affects people from all races, ages, backgrounds, no matter where they live, hunger is an issue in our community, and I believe that voting is a civic duty. Uh, I also believe serving is a civic duty. So I invite all people who are available to join us at 8 o'clock next Saturday morning at St. Mary's Food Bank to please come and do your civic duty to help those who are in hunger in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. John Bost. Good morning, again. I'm going to talk to you this morning about everyone's favorite topic, medical emergencies, or more specifically, how we deal with medical emergencies here at church. This is a talk we're supposed to have once a year. I think it may have been two years, but uh, so forgive me. I'll talk slow. Um, <laughs> the, the, the first thing to do, of course, is to pick up your phone and call 911, and you tell them what's going on. And here's the hard part. They're going to ask, where are you calling from? And no one's remembering our address, of course. So this is posted at several places around the way. On the uh, little signs that show the, the fire exits, uh, our address is posted on the uh, first aid kit, uh, posted on the window uh, over Mina's desk. Uh, so as you're calling, run to one of those places so you can uh, read off the address. And they come fairly quickly. We haven't had to use them too much, but they do come quick. In the meantime, uh, what do we do? There are several nurses in the parish, as well as trained uh, emergency medical technicians, and they uh, rise to the surface in a, a crisis like that and uh, will help out. Also, oh, and by the way, um, our ushers and greeters are all trained in uh, emergency response, and that training will be redone uh, after the first of the year, and we're thinking of opening that up for others that might uh, appreciate going as well. We have a defibrillator uh, mounted right next to the door, on the left side of the door, as you're going out the building. And you'll know it now because yesterday it just started beeping, telling us that it's time to replace the battery. I've got a new battery on order, and it won't beep next week, I hope. Um, we have a first aid kit mounted right next to it, and your first instinct is going to open that up and grab something, and as soon as you do that, everything is going to fall out. So stand back and look at the little sign that says lift off from the wall and set it down on the table, and then you can open up and get whatever you need. If you do use something from that, please fill out the little form saying what you used it for and a date so I have some record and uh, know what need we need to um, replace. Last thing, we have a new gizmo. 
and this will be set right up on top of the defibrillator. And what is it? This is something that clears your airway if you're choking. Uh, if you, you try to eat the whole muffin at the same time and it blocks your airway, uh, you put this up on your face and someone pulls the plunger, pushes the plunger and then pulls it. And I'm not going to open it up because it's a one-shot thing and it has to be uh, replaced after that. But it is quite effective and uh, very good for clearing that uh, muffin that you tried to eat all at once. Uh, where am I? Speaking of food, uh, several people in the parish who have food allergies, I'm one of them, we know that uh, peanut allergies are a very critical one. Uh, we put out snacks um, for different occasions, Sunday uh, uh, coffee being one of them, and it's really hard to control what goes into those because the snacks are provided by so many volunteers. Uh, so we really can't be responsible for it. So instead we've got a little sign there that says may include nuts. So that's a warning to people who have nut allergies. Someone suggested that we put the little may include nuts sign outside by the welcome <laughs> sign, but we're not going to do that. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, John. I actually bought one of those devices for my mom who lives alone and you just put it on there kind of like a CPAP machine and you just pull the suction and it will suction out. So you can use it if you live alone. So it's a really great way and people's lives have been saved from that. And now we have the chair of our outreach committee, Kathy Hackworthy. Good morning. Um, I am Kathy Hackworthy, chair of our outreach committee. And our outreach committee is happy to announce our upcoming Adventure 2024, Snowflakes of Charity. And the event will be Friday, December 6th. Ticket sales are gonna start next Sunday, and the pricing is gonna remain the same at $60 a ticket. This year we're gonna be opening up the church even bigger and increasing the number of tables available. So you could bring a friend, a neighbor or even purchase a whole entire table for six people to come join us at the event. All proceeds go to serving our community and um, one of our outreach ministries that we're proud of is Casa Academy. We've been doing this outreach ministry for over 10 years and we're now providing the kids with shoes and uniforms to help their parents to service them through each semester. Um, how can you help? You can donate an auction item for our event. There's a flyer in your bulletin, and please take it home and read it. This is the, we're going to have different flyers each week about the event, and it'll give you different ways that you could help. You could attend an outreach dinner. Many of our outreach committee members are going to be hosting dinners like we did last year. It's a wonderful way for fellowship, and it's just really great to get to know people in the congregation. You can purchase a raffle ticket. Like last year, we'll have several different raffle items that we're gonna display weekly. And this year, our kids are working on a special item that they're gonna present as a raffle item. So all of us are getting involved. We're very, very excited to celebrate our Nativity Outreach Ministries and the wonderful congregation that we have. And we hope you come join us on December 6th. We'll, each week, we'll be providing more information. If you have any questions, our adventure team is myself, Kathy Graff, Janice Snyder, Heidi Williams, and Debbie Myrick, and we're all there to help answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Kathy, I heard we're having a jazz group called Jazzona, is that right? Yes, it is. And we're going to open up these doors, and each table has six people, right? Yes. So you can buy a table, invite some neighbors, whatever you'd like. We'll have jazz, we'll sing Christmas carols, is that right? Yes, and we're gonna sing Christmas carols after. We're gonna have a wine poll where people can come if they'd like and buy a bottle of surprise wine. That's why it's called a wine poll for $20. It's really fun. There's a 50-50 raffle. The evening is just really to celebrate all of us and then give to our communities. And the wine has to be at least $15, so we're not pulling out like That's two bucks correct. Out, right? That's correct, so you'll have a, a value for your money. Right. So thank you, thank you. Father yeah. Wayne, I'm going to share what's going on after church today. Yes. So everyone gets some cake. Yes, I will be doing Power Bible study today, but the Maricopa County election people have overtaken the Holy Family Room. 
So we're going to do it right over here, what I call the West Wing Chapel, okay? So um, when you're ready uh, with your uh, snacks and what have you, uh, join me over here and uh, we'll, we're going to talk about Job. We'll get that done today because uh, I started it a couple, two, three, three weeks ago, but today we had our last reading on Job. And I tell you what, you might be surprised at what we're going to come out with. So see you then. Thank you very much. Do we have any birthdays today or anniversaries? I know that Jim Graves' birthday is the 29th, and he is at home preparing for surgery. So I'd ask you to keep him in your prayers tomorrow. He has a couple of valves and a bypass uh, tomorrow. So it's a very serious surgery. I'd ask you to keep him in your prayers as well as uh, Joyce and his family. All right, come on up, folks. Tell me when your birthday is, Miss Barb. Friday, last. Last Friday. Two days ago. Okay. Don? Uh, Tuesday the 29th. Tuesday, same as Jim. Same as Jim. Birthday yep. twins. Okay. Beth? Halloween. Halloween. Okay. And mine happens to be today. And I'm going to invite my sister and brother Ford, who are from out of town, my sister Kelly McComas Edens from McLean, Virginia, and my brother Andy McComas from uh, the Nashville area, Brentwood, Tennessee. And I'm going to ask Father Wayne to lead us in this so that I can get the blessing as well. All right, so we all know how this works, right? Um, yeah, they are all children, exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just here to support you. Yes, There's no yes. going on right here. Just want right. to make sure we're clear. Um, yeah, let's do this. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrow. Raise them up if they fall, and in thy hearts, and that ease which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So I have a question for each of us. Do you have any, do you know any famous people who share your birthday from history? Off the top of your head? Anybody? Okay, so I've got a lot to live up to. Teddy Roosevelt, the great Irish poet Dylan Thomas, do not go gentle into that good night, but rage, rage against the dying of the light. And my favorite, John Cleese, Monty Python. Let's give them all an applause just for being born. <laughs> so all are welcome to receive communion. We have a week wafer that Father Wayne and I will come and bring you. You just come for the direction of the ushers, start here and fill in. We'll bring you a wheat wafer. If you need a gluten-free, just do palms down. We'll give you a gluten-free wafer, <coughs> which is hermetically sealed. And then the blue chalices will follow for dipping for intinction, and then if you'd like to drink from a chalice, we'll have a metal one over here and one over here so that we don't cross-contaminate. The flu is very serious out there now, as well as COVID, so we want to be as safe as we can possibly be. And all are welcome to receive. This is our Lord's table and not our own, and all are welcome. Now walk in love as Christ of each of us and gave himself to us an offering to God.
My friend Vanessa, who lives in our building, and her friend Mike. Vanessa said, what would you like for your birthday? I said, for you to sing Panas Angelicus. C'est un bel cadeau, mon ami. Merci beaucoup, mon amour. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made each of us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. In the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death resurrection and ascension we offer you these gifts sanctify them by your holy spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace and at our last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom all this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ lived, died, and was raised for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
There's a sign-up sheet on the office window for the chili cook-off if you'd like to indicate you would bring some. Our post communion prayer is found on page 366 or on the screens. Let us stand to give thanks to the Lord for the sacrament. Let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of your most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries. Of your Son, the heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, in honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you today and forevermore. Amen. And serve the Lord and each other. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank <laughs> you. 